Yes, we're live. Hi, guys, and welcome back to the Library of Alexandria. And today, guys, uh, today, oh my gosh, look at it. Like, I went live and all of a sudden, like 80 Ooh. comments appeared. Wow. Um, today, we are going to be discussing Dragonfly Falling, book two in the Shadows of the Apt uh, series by Adrian Tchaikovsky, which is how, how has BookTube slept on this series for so long? I have never heard anything about this from anyone until, you know, D Dom, until we, you know, we mentioned it first. And then Dom's like, I've read all of those. And I'm like, what? How has no one else talked about this? Because this is so good. Anyway, I have, this is unusual, ladies and gentlemen, who are watching this, an unusual uh, group of panelists in that none of them are actually on BookTube, but they are all on BookTube. <laughs> But they all have many, many, many things to input into the conversation on the Discord. So, you know, you've probably talked to them about the book already. So we have, um, I'll let them introduce themselves and their, their IG channels. Um, but it's Angela, Katrina, and Shay. And Angela, you go ahead and pitch your bookstagram so everyone will follow you. Okay. I'm Angela. Like Alan said, I have a bookstagram. I read a little bit of everything, but predominantly fantasy. And I also write bookish content for an online publication called Drizzle. Katrina. Hi, everyone. I'm Katrina. My Instagram is the diary of a book nerd. And I mostly read adult fantasy, sci fi, and every once in a while classics or contemporary. Shay? Um, my name is Shay. You call me Shy, either or, um, at Shy's Library on, on Instagram. Um, and I primarily read sci fi fantasy. Um, and uh, I have been leaning more sci-fi recently, even though I used to think that I was I was more of a fantasy person. But yeah, have I been pronouncing your name wrong? I really I either or. I, I, got the same thing. I mean, it makes sense. Your name is Cheyenne, right? Shy so that would make sense. But I, also, yeah. E Y does not scream like. I know. Okay, shy henceforth. So sorry. You're so very nice for not correcting me, being like, "Hey, it's not my name, idiot." <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> um, Albert, don't worry. We'll be talking about non-spoilers to start with. So you're safe to hang around that. Um, but then we will be talking about uh, spoilers. Ina, Ina reads it, um, has read it with uh, Angela, Katrina, and I in, uh, in a boxer mm -hmm. chat. Um, Dom, the, 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 the original hype man for this series. Zara, who loves Folding Knife, and rightly so. Yes. And um, so, yeah. So, guys, you're welcome to stay um, while we talk about non-spoilers. So, this is – please note the comment that is below, that is pinned below, guys. This series particularly, please, if you have read the whole series or passed this one, please don't comment on anything beyond this book and Empire in Black and Gold. Because if you tell me that I really need to wait and see what Stenwall does in book six, you're telling me – that Stenwald survives till book six. And I don't want to know. So please, please just be very cognizant of the comments just for these two books, even if you have read, even if you have read farther. Dom is the godfather of the app. So this book picks up right after Empire Black and Gold, like immediately after Empire Black and Gold. I think it's like, you know, maybe a couple weeks, maybe a, maybe a month maximum. And at the end of Empire in Black and Gold, we see the defense of the pride uh, where the, the wasps defend the, the huge locomotive that's going to be able to transport troops, um, you know, mass transport troops directly to Collegium. And, you know, they stop that. And um, yes, Klaus, and you know you are. Um, and so Stenwald has gone back to Collegium with uh, Achaeus the Moth, Che, his niece, Tissamon, and Tynissa. But Salma has gone to Tark looking for grief in chains, and Totho went with him because he doesn't want to be near Che because you know she rejected him, which you know I get it. Um, and then Athalric has been is is going to be sent to 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 Collegium as well. So we pick up right there, and so let's go ahead and talk about what you guys thought. What are your overall just kind of general thoughts on? this particular book. I, first of all, everybody in the comments, what did y'all get? What did y'all give the, um, what did y'all give it total? I gave it five stars. I gave it five stars because I thought some of the character work, like some of the plot lines in here were fantastic. Like uh, one of the character arcs was just exceptional. And some of the themes, like the, 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 the thematic stuff that comes later, especially about war and the way wars are fought and the changing nature of war. Um, I really loved. And 
guys, y'all know I love military fantasy. And Tchaikovsky's siege work in Tchaikovsky's siege work is excellent. I would pit it against Cornwell. And Cornwell writes the best sieges um, that I've read. And but his historical fiction, not even fantasy. Um, his sharp sieges are just exceptional. And I thought Tchaikovsky, the siege of of the multiple sieges in this book were just just really, really good. Now, I do have some issues with it, which we'll talk about in a minute. But uh, but yeah, I give it five stars. Angela, why don't you go ahead, since you're the low baller of us here, go ahead and tell us. How did I know? Um, I gave it 3.75 stars. Um, I agree. I think Empire. the themes, I gave Empire four stars. Okay. So see, so so like it looks, it doesn't look as bad as it sounds when you see that you gave Empire four. I gave Empire five as well. Anitha, yes. Four stars is not a bad rating. I agree. Neither is 3.75. I mean, I less agree, but I got you. <laughs> I know. I know you less agree. Um, but I agree with you that I think I the themes were done well and the action sequences specifically for the military conflicts were done well. And there's one character arc in particular that was exceptional. However, um, I feel like the focus was on the plot and we lost a lot of the character work that we could have had. And um, I was not happy with some of the plot lines and where they went. And we'll talk about that, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. And I, my biggest issue is I feel like this book should have been split in half. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. I think when we end up talking about it, yeah. it seems like this book either needed to be two 400 page books or mm -hmm. it needed to be 200 pages longer in order to encompass everything that he needed to do. And right before we went live, guys, we were talking about how the next two books are so short comparatively, like the, the next book is 250 pages shorter than Dragonfly Falling. So we were wondering if he did indeed write a really long third book and they're like, dude, down the middle. Um, so we'll see. The strumpet does strike again. Anitha, five stars. Klaus gave it three. And, you know, I, I mean, that's fine. I understand Klaus's problems with it. Um, Klaus, you are continuing with, with Mantis, though, right? Um, Zara, don't do that. That's that's not right. Yeah, don't do don't that. ever do that. Um, did you read the sharp books, um, Albert? Like the, the India ones? They were excellent. Um, Bridget gave it five stars. Nice. There's a lot of five stars up in here. Katrina, what about you? So I rated this book four stars and I rated Empire in Black and Gold 4.25. So I also enjoyed this one a little bit less. Um, overall, I really liked how the world building expanded in this one. Uh, we learned a lot about different kinds of kindin, which I really all enjoy. Um, and we kind of explored more of the world itself and cities and areas that we didn't see in the first book. So that part I really enjoyed. I also agreed that I liked some of the character work uh, in this book, some of it not so much. And I think um, part of the reason that the character work um, was not the best in this one is because there were so many POVs um, compared to the first book that really exploded in the second book. The POVs were kind of all over the place in this book. And I think that is what um, dropped my rating a little. Yeah, sorry, if you guys see me go mute and unmute, I'm trying not to cough into the mic. I am ill, I apologize everybody. Um, no, I agree. And the thing is, even though, here's the, here's the thing, even though most people liked the first one better, um, I liked the first one better. I think I like mm -hmm. Empire Black and Gold slightly better, even though I gave them both five stars. I think uh, Nero said the same thing in the in the comments. Um, no one has given it under three stars. Like no one didn't like the book. Even Klaus, like Klaus, gave it three, and he you know has his problems, which is fine. He, he still didn't dislike the book, which uh, which pleases me greatly. Yeah, right there. So he's going to continue. So I'm hoping that um, I'm hoping that Mantis fixes a lot of our issues. I think because this this book was so expansive. It covered too much geography. You know, we've got these guys over here in the Southwest in Collegium, and then we've got these guys over here in the East at Tark, and then we've got, you know, Sorry. whatever takes place in Capitas, yeah. which is even mm -hmm. further East. You finally get to see it in the Blood of the Mantis map. Um, it's even further East. So, Ava, Ava, no, no. It's not even close to when you need to eat. Um, literally, no. Cat. Um, oh, but yes, the world building, the, um, I loved all the stuff we learned about ant society. Like this was very ant heavy, this particular book. And we mm -hmm. got to, you know, mm -hmm. see how all the, the ants are kind of like 
different. The ants remind me so much. Sh shy. Sorry, I don't want to say shy. Shy. Don't the ants remind you of the freaking Greek city states? Right. So, like they 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 hate each other. They're mm -hmm. always fighting each other. Like and they're they're independent. They have their own kind of like their own kind of societies and cultures. But it's mm -hmm. all very militaristic, and they end up fighting each other all the time when they're not you know uniting against a common mm -hmm. threat. Like. I'm so glad you're here. So you can, you can affirm that. Absolutely. what do you think of it? Um, I think I am in the minority here in saying that I liked it so much more than Empire. Wow. Uh, and I think that is because uh, I am more of a uh, plot driven reader than character driven, which that in and of itself is not a great, um, not in, of, in and of itself is not a popular opinion. Uh, but I didn't mind, like, I definitely disagreed with some character decisions that he made uh, for, for certain people. Um, but I think the pacing for me was a lot better in this book than it was in Empire. And I loved, like, like was mentioned, the expansive world building that we got. And I was always on the edge of my seat um, to, to see what happened next. And I think part of what made the pacing worked so well for me was how many POVs we got and how quickly they would change. Um, I think that's one of my favorite things about Tchaikovsky's writing, especially in these books, is that like even if the chapters are long because we switch back and forth with the POVs so much, um, I think it really helps me drive the book along. And I, I, really that. I think you and I are very similar in that. Absolutely. Like, absolutely. Part of it, part of the reason that I like the first one is because I think this book did my boy dirty. Like there is almost after yeah. <laughs> chapter 16 or something like there's almost no Thalric in the whole book. And I'm like, really? Like, really? You're going to like I, y'all well, know who heard me uh, talk about the first book. I loved Thalric. And he just in the back half of the book didn't have much to do. Well, I, I think very sad. That's also why I think the so many POVs didn't work for this, because if you were invested in one character's story, you had yeah. to wait 100 or 150 pages until you saw them again, which sometimes it was fine. But then sometimes you were stuck on a POV that you didn't really want to see much of. That's yeah. kind of what I meant earlier, too. Um, I feel like for this book, the POVs really serve the plot rather than the character arcs. And he had to pick one or the other and he went with the plot for this one. So we'll see how that lends itself to book three and four. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I think that's why Shay and I liked it slightly better than you guys is because I was invested in what was happening. And so I knew that, you know, we have to have um, in one of the sieges, we have to have the the ant commander that, you know, no one cares about. Like, who is who are yeah. you? Ariaka or whatever your name is. Like, no one cares. Um, but we need it because we need that's the only way we can see what's going on outside the siege. Um and so, uh, so yeah, I mean, I think there was just a lot to get done. Yeah, the Vec ants were excellent at war. The Tark, mm -hmm. <laughs> stupid Tark ants. But who is the, who is P P Paralops or Paralops? Or who's the Parapis? Or, I don't, I don't yeah. know Paralops, how to pronounce Paralops the name. The one that was with Nero. Paralops? Yeah. yeah. Dude, I love Nero in this one. I, I did too. <laughs> and I am so sad. Like, well, I, my prediction was gone because last time I predicted I predicted that Nero was the one that betrayed them at Mina 17 years ago. But then we're in Nero's head and Nero feels so bad that he abandoned them, you know, and that's why he does a lot of stuff that he does. So it wasn't Nero, but we know it wasn't um, Atrissa and we know it wasn't Stenwald and we know it wasn't Tissamon. Is it Marius? Like, is it the ant? Like, I don't know who else it could be. I hope they tell us. I hope we don't finish 10 books and not find out who betrayed them at Mina. Yeah. Um, but let's see what, what folks are saying. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you didn't want, if there were particular characters you wanted to follow, for example, Che and Akios fans, uh, I think Christy was telling me, um, oh my gosh, Christy. <laughs> <laughs> Christy was boxering me, telling me that, you know, she wanted more of Che and Akios. She missed them. And uh, I mean, I get it, but tough, like <laughs> cope. There's no, there's hardly yeah. any Che and Akios in this book. Um, Klaus being a Che fan, how very strange. I'm um, actually surprised I'm me. Surprised. Um, Urza, I, I think there's some, I think there's some twisty turnies that you should avoid for the spoiler section. I think there's some things yeah. you should avoid. Um, yeah, um, exactly. I know I, I, I'm not a huge Che fan, so I was totally okay. Pair ops. There we go. Um, 
<laughs> I used to have a cat named Nero, so I've said I've said that before also. Um, yes, there is quite a bit of Tissaman and Tanissa, not as much as Angela mm -hmm. wanted, but there is yeah. there is a there's way more of Tanissa and Tissaman than there is of Che and Akios. Okay, but that's not a good comparison. <laughs> There was more um, of everybody compared to Che and Akios. Uh, Bridget here say, implying that the, the Mina betrayal yeah, yeah. was freaking- I had that thought. I had that thought as well. Guys, I hate shape changing in fantasy. It is my least favorite thing because it is too powerful. Shape changing is too powerful. Unless it has like a glaring weakness that people just like, unless there's like something like their eyes are always gray or whatever. And just, you know, cause how often do you notice people's eyes? They almost, almost never. Um, but like, if it's a perfect copy, it's just too strong. And I'm so ticked that Scylla wasn't killed in the last book. Yeah. Um, yes, Nero. Yes. You and I are of a mind. The Collegium storyline was my favorite by far. Uh, except for Toto's mm -hmm. storyline. Um, hold on. See, see this, see, this guy's this, why you don't have to be nervous. You don't have to worry about anything because people are always commenting. So we always have like stuff to comment on. Um, um, so, yeah. So, um, Anything else like non-spoiler we can talk about? We've got about 15 minutes non-spoiler stuff. I think I think that, uh, I mean, it was plot-driven. He needed to, all mm -hmm. of this to happen. Yeah. Um, and Angela and I were talking about this before, where just like in Long Price Quartet, where some people don't love Shadow and Summer, but after you have read Autumn War and Price of Spring, you understand why Shadow and Summer was the way it was. And it all, because it informed what happened in the last two books. Um, and, and Angela was saying she would probably raise her rating if this book was necessary in order to have an awesome book three and four. Um, is it as if like books three and four were made better by the fact that, you know, two existed? Because it just seems like he's having to set up a lot in this. Like he had to have those sieges. He had to have the stuff. Um, I mean, I agree, Klaus. Yes. Um, he had to have a lot of the stuff happen. We can talk about the the beginning because even the 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 people who haven't finished it have read the opening chapter. So, Angela and Katrina, I know you guys didn't love the first chapter. I thought because okay, so this is the non spoiler stuff. I, think I liked it. Oh, Ina didn't like it. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, Ina and I had issues, but it wasn't that we didn't like it. It's just we yeah. had wished it started differently. I think that the way that Tchaikovsky characterizes, he does a lot of showing characterization, not telling, mm -hmm. and he does it very, very quickly. I just love, like, I love the way the emperor was characterized in just that first chapter, like four mm -hmm. pages, and we already know so much about, yeah. about the emperor. Like, there was one line, when Perops, you know, Perops joins, he, remember Perops is, they put him in charge of stuff in Tark because he's the ant that doesn't really think like the hive mind. So they're like, whatever, Perops, go and read your book somewhere else. And he's constantly trying to find a place where he belongs. And then there's one line about him joining the shield wall where he's like, he was always looking for his place only to find that this was always his place in the shield wall with his people. And it's, it was so moving to me. And it was, so, it was, just, it was one line. Mm -hmm. I love the way Tchaikovsky does characterization. I love it. Even if I don't always love the actual character choices, as we will discuss, re my one of my previous favorites, Stenwald, who is no longer one of my favorites, because he is no. gross now. <laughs> <laughs> Can we all agree that he is gross yes. now? Yes. Yes. No, yeah. Yeah. So what did you think of the of the opening chapter, uh, Shai, with uh, the emperor and, um, yeah, the emperor and I guess his sister wasn't in it, but just the emperor. I loved it. Um, I, I think even this is the thing that I recognize in Empire is that I, not just the way uh, Tchaikovsky does characterization, but the fact that like 
I can care about so many characters with him and within like he introduces them. And I feel like within a paragraph, I know who they are as a person. I understand and I understand their motivations and I find them believable characters. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that he can do that within a paragraph, some authors can't do that for me within a whole book. Um, So I think even, even that for me was consistent throughout this and especially with the, the emperor. Um, And I don't know. I also find it interesting that the, the emperor to me, while he felt powerful, um, it wasn't a, like the empire is powerful because the, the emperor, the empire is powerful because the emperor is this, you know, uh, some great strategist, some great individual human. The empire is powerful because of all of its parts, because the people who believe are are nationalists, more or less, right? Um, and I think he could have, Tchaikovsky could have painted the the emperor in a different fashion. And I don't think that would have been as believable, but I love the way he characterized him. Um, I agree. I, I completely agree. And um, Klaus says the emperor is like, he likes him, but he's not really, he's really kind of pointless in this book. And that's kind of true, but yeah. I think he's setting up, I think we're setting up, you know, we're going to see something big in books three and four. Christy, absolutely. Look at this that Christy just uh, posted. He slung on a gown trimmed with the fur of 300 moths. Like that's so good. You know, exactly the kind of person he is mm-hmm. uh, just from that. Oh man. So good. Um, but yeah, I, I think the emperor could have been just the standard power mad emperor. Mm-hmm. But you see that he at the same time, and even though he doesn't really have a ton to do in this book, I love that you see that he simultaneously um, likes the power, like, b- but is he, he has all these advisors like, oh, they wish that they wish that they were me and everything. And he's like, they don't understand for a second the weight of an entire empire that's on your shoulders. Like imagine, like everyone's like, yo, I want to be president. Do you though? Look at, look at every president when they enter office and then when they leave office. Do you really want to be president? It's like, it's like they enter a time warp where it ages them, you know, 20 years for every year that they're there. And so he kills all of his children. One, because for two reasons, one, because he does not want an heir so people like people only keep him alive because there's no one else. Two, he also doesn't want to pass on this, you know, this burden. And he also like his dad it says his dad was born into the role. And, you know, this is all he did all day, every day. Like he was just a soldier, a born born with a sword in his hand, I think it says. So it was just really good. Um, and I think a lot of the characters have flaws and are really, really, uh, you know, rich characters. Um, but I agree with um, Anitha and and Reading Rainbow in that Stenwald isn't my favorite anymore, but I still like Stenwald. I just very, very strenuously disagree with what he did, even though in the context of the world, in the context of the events, I understand why he did what he did. I just don't agree with it. I mean, again, remember, he thought he was going to die. Like, he's like, I'm dead next day. And when you're going to die the next day, you're just like, whatever, like. Who cares? You know what I mean? Like, guess I'm going to, I don't know, play Monopoly for once because I hate it <laughs> and I'm going to die. Might as well do it. Um, there's, but, I was um, gonna, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say there's a difference between having inconsistent character work and the characters making decisions that we don't like and we don't want them to make. And I feel like depending on the character, we have a little bit of both happening. With mm-hmm. Stenwald, I think even though the choices he makes later are probably not the ones we would have liked to have seen him make, it makes sense for his character arc. Um, and mm-hmm. like you were saying, he was going to die, so he did what he did. Um, whereas with another character, their character work, I feel like, is not very well founded. Like, their motivations and stuff are very questionable. So I feel like that is a little bit more inconsistent um, in comparison to Stenwald. Yeah. Klaus, you're right. You're right. The heavy, heavy is the head to wear <laughs> the crown, Klaus. Heavy is the head. Um but yes, I completely agree. And so, guys, we're gonna probably going to talk into spoilers, um, unless you guys have any other non-spoiler thoughts. Like, I just w- wanted to mention Tchaikovsky's characterization, and Shay, you yeah. you said it better than I could. Like, it's just, he does such a good job, and that's what has kept me with this. And I had no idea 
that I was going to love these books as much as I've loved them so so far. So we're going to transition into spoilers, guys. So if you haven't read it, you should probably go. And um, uh, yeah, you should just not hang out and then come watch it afterwards because it'll be up on my channel. So <coughs> let's we have many places to go. Why don't we start in Collegium and end up in Tark? Um, let's start in Collegium because we were talking about Stenwald. So Stenwald, um, I love the fact that, you know, Thalric has this team that's trying to take out Stenwald. Mm -hmm. I don't, none of us love that he, he, he sleeps with Ariana, right? Uh -huh. None of us love that. It's, it's one of his students. Fortunately, he's not a high school teacher. He is a college professor. So it is slightly, I mean, it's, it's less illegal at least. Um, it's still skeezy, but what I love about it is, so I, so I, I don't like any about it. I don't like anything about it, but I like how it, it does show Stenwall having a flaw because earlier, um, yeah, Practically Mystic says, glad he has flaws now. We saw a little bit of that last book when Totho was talking to him about, um, you know, Totho was asking about, about Che and he had that look of revulsion that he couldn't hide that hit me right in the feels like. Stenwald is flawed. And here we see it again. He feels old. He feels, re remember guys, he's been saying for 20 years to the Collegium that the wasps were coming for 20 years and he's been ignored. And now he thinks that he sent Salma and Totho to die. He has sent Che and um, Akios hoping that they'll be safe. Tynissa and his, remember he didn't have anybody talk to. He's like, I wish I had a friend here. And he, so he feels old and he is a teacher that no one listens to him. And then all of a sudden, this young, beautiful woman, all of a sudden is interested in what he has to say. He's a guy, he's a guy who's, he's a teacher who feels like no one cares. And so he is just like, he's drawn to her in that, you know, oh, someone does care. And am I not that old? Am I still attractive type thing? But not, let's not forget that she's also a spider. So she's also using her weird sexy time stuff on him right so i like that i hate that he sleeps with her but i like that he's like afterwards he's like i used to look down i looked down on the on the professors who have done that because i mean it's a college obviously that happens and he's like but this is different and then he's like no it's not it's not different he acknowledges that he is literally those same skis balls mm -hmm. And that is what I like in that it is scuzzy, but he acknowledges how scuzzy it is. You know what I mean? So. I think in, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I think in that scenario, my problem is more with Ariana and not that in the situation I have more of a problem with her, but Stenwald's character is at least believable. His motivation, his inner monologue, it makes sense for what's going on. To me, it didn't make sense what Ariana was doing um, because her, first of all, she wasn't, she, she didn't really have loyalty to anyone. So she was kind of like, okay, I'll spy on these people for what, two years she was there spying. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden she had a change of heart. I don't know. It just, it didn't sit right with me and it felt a little inconsistent. Okay. Thoughts? I... Uh... I wonder if part of Ariana's thing is also that um, she doesn't feel like she has a place in the world and Sten, Stenwald is giving her that, right? She, he is making her feel important. And That's true. I a, you know, that kind of codependent relationship. Um, and I think the one thing that is saving Stenwald's character for me, at least for right now, is that um, I don't think if things were to like go back to normal right now, I don't think he would continue his relationship with her if he had to go back to being in that like um, professor student role, right? Because uh, if he would, like if we were back if, if this was not a, a, a military fantasy book, right? And this was just him knowing how, how bad his decision was, but continuing to see her anyway, despite being her professor kind of thing, like that would make me hate his character. Um, but I think with the circumstances, I think there is some redeemable aspects to him, 
even though I really disagree with his decisions. Yeah. Um, you're right. Ariana, we've, we're told she's kicked out of the Aristoi, which is the noble houses in, mm -hmm. um, in, in the Spiderlands. And so she doesn't really have a place to belong. And the, the, re, the, re, what's it called? Recap. The Recap. Recap. The Recap mm -hmm. has given her that place. And so everyone's talking about kind of the changes of hearts. They all have a change of heart because they just, like they want the empire to come and just kind of be the Romans because the wasp are the Romans. They don't destroy anything. They don't have to. They come in, they stick a wasp governor and a garrison, make sure you pay your taxes, join the military. I mean, take some slaves and then they move on. They're not, they don't, you know, sweep through and, and kill everything. So that's what they want. But when Thalric says, hey, guess what? Y'all screwed up. So plans change. Vec is going to come and kill everybody here. They don't want their home destroyed. So for me, it didn't seem like a sudden change of heart. They're like, well, this is not what we signed up for. We signed up to just have a empire run collegium. We didn't sign up for a dead collegium. I think they like being college students. You know what I mean? Or whatever. Um, and so... I mean, she does want a place to belong. And I think you're right, um, Shai. I don't think that if everything was normal, he would still be with her. Now, he does free her at the end. But again, this is after Collegium is being sieged by Vec. He lets her go and is like, see ya, bye. You cannot stay here. And I do love, I do love in there that he feels her messing with his mind. And he's like, no, I cannot trust anything you say. How do I know? I can never trust anything you say. So leave, you can't stay here. And then, I mean, I wish you would have gone, but then he finds her in, in, in his room and he gets back, he gets back with her. But again, he does that because he literally thinks they're all dead tomorrow. He thinks that they cannot repel the fact they're all dead tomorrow. So he sleeps there because he's like, I should not do this. This is horrible, but I'm dead tomorrow. Who cares? You know, whatever, might as well. And so now, now it's a little different. Like, they're just, she's proven herself to be on the side of the, on the side of Collegium. And it's just, I mean, it's not, it's not the best. It's not my favorite thing. And I do love Sten. Um, but, but yeah, Angela, what are your thoughts on, on the Sten Ariana thing? I mean, I kind of agree with a lot of what you guys have talked about. For me, I didn't necessarily think it was a change of heart for Ariana. And I know a lot of people didn't like her. I don't love her character. I will say, um, Alan, you and I talked about this. She had one redeeming scene for me, and that's when she kills that um, really gross fly. Kofi, screw yeah. that guy. Yeah. So when that happened, I was like, okay, you're at least more useful to me than like Selma, which I know we're going to talk about. Um, <laughs> I'll let you lead the charge on Selma. <laughs> on Selma. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then with Stenwald, I mean, it's the same thing. I don't love that they're kind of back together, and he suddenly trusts her and we'll see, I guess what's going to happen um, with that relationship going forward. Um, but I don't, I don't love it or anything. I'm not like, yeah. Oh yeah, that, that was a great choice you made Stenwald. So yeah. I think, I mean, I think you're right, Mystic. Um, like the, the questionable decisions of these people kind of mirrors the chaos of the war and talking about the collegium stuff. First of all, first of all, two points that we can discuss one when those when the kids turn on Thalric, that was an awesome scene. And then he goes, and then he goes and chases, and then the fight with Felice. And then I thought the final defense of Collegium was so moving, starting from Kaiman, when you know the old ant weapon master who's like, like guys, you better line up. This is your home. I'm from Kess. This is not my home. You're fighting to defend your home. So grab a weapon, get in line, and defend your home from the, these invaders. And, oh, I just got chills. And they're all like getting in the line, you know, scholars who don't know how to fight, grabbing every weapon. And we watch as the Vec just tear them apart, but they hold the line. And from the second we started Kaimon's POV and he starts that, I'm like, definitely dead. And it made me so sad. And then watching all of these other, you know, uh, collegiates just on the line die in front of Stenwald's eyes. It's, it was so good and so powerful. I love that last line of defense uh, for Collegium and seeing all these inventors coming up and being like, so Sten, I got this crazy thing. I got jetpacks. Like, can we use these jetpacks? Hey, I got a sub. 
can I use my submarine? It's got like a drill on it. And all these people just coming out with, hey, I've got this thing that literally flays the skin from people's bones. Can I use that and then kill myself afterwards? That's the one that got me. I was like, ah. Oh. You know who I really liked in Collegium? Balkus or Balkus? Yeah. I, I, I love <laughs> Balkus with his nail gun. He's awesome. Yeah. And that's one of the things that made me happy about his dumb thing with Ariana is the fact that the whole time Balkus was watching. Balkus yep. was, was hidden every time they went somewhere because Stenwall trust but verify. Anyway, so y'all, um, I started with Shia last time. Angela, what um, your thoughts on the Collegium on either, you know, Tissamon and Thalric or um, the Collegium defense? Um, I kind of want to talk about Tissamon a little bit. Go ahead. Because he's one of my favorite characters. And kind of like you were talking about that there's a duel that kind of comes near the, I think it's in, towards the second half of the book, specifically between him and Felice. I love that, that duel. Was so good. It, is it was so, so good. good. Yeah. That was one of my favorite scenes, just the way he handles the action and the duel. And even Tissamon's like internal thoughts. There's a part where he's like, I haven't fought someone this good in so long. So you automatically already see from his perspective, knowing his background and the fact that he's a weapons master, how highly he regards her. And I liked Felice from the minute that she came on the page as well. Um, so I really liked that sequence of events that followed. Katrina? <laughs> yeah, how you were saying before how all of the scholars kind of came together and started um, all these things that they were inventing and kind of just had in their workshops. They're like, hey, I guess this is a great time to try this out. And how Christy said in the chat, the submersible, that was great. And then how he just decided, you know what, I'm going to go take out this ship. And he just left in the middle of the night or whatever and never came back. Um, but I will say the parts in Collegium is really what made me realize that I like military fantasy. I <laughs> Those battle scenes and the siege, I was just so engrossed. I couldn't stop reading. I just needed to know what happened. And it was written so well. Um, I thought it was a great um, like combination of action and great character moments, which really is what hooks me in when there's great character moments in with the action. Um, like with Graydon, uh, Graydon is one that really got me. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what Pete was saying. Um, where is it? Pete said, yeah, the guy who couldn't, couldn't yeah. seeing a sandblaster. Like that was, that was just really powerful. And again, that's part of this, the whole theme of like how war is changing, how technology changes war and how war is what spurs technological change. It was, I thought that was so well done, all of the stuff. And when all of those freaking, like um, uh, whoever set up here, when, um, when they're all giving those inventions to Stenwald, if only Totho had been in Collegium, perhaps yeah. things might have been slightly different. Uh, Bridget, Pete says jocks versus nerds. That's what Collegium is. Um, and then the chain in the harbor. Yes, I am always a huge fan of freaking Syracuse and its great chain. Um, yes, the Vec army shocked. Like that ant commander has no, like, she's like, what is happening? What is happening? How are these, like, how are these nerds able to repel us? Um, like, I think- Yes, they're... oh my gosh, yes, Anita. How they're blowing up their yeah. homes. Oh, and yeah. And after yeah. the wall has fallen. Oh, I forgot about that. That's so good. Um, Klaus not liking the Here Comes the Cavalry at the end. I thought it was set up. I, I mean, I knew it was gonna happen. I thought yeah. it, was, it was set up fine. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, could we have used some more development on that part? Probably. But again, that's the whole, it needed to be two books or 200 pages longer. Yeah. Um, tear it up, hold on. Put it down. Yes, it was so, so good. Um, disagree, Klaus, but we'll talk about that soon. Um, uh, hold on. Okay, so Scudo didn't die off screen, guys. We saw him die. We just didn't realize it was him. Mm -hmm. He was in the runaway train, that the, the runaway like locomotive. Automo Automobile. That, yeah. that, that, that hit the, Automobile, that yeah. hit the gates. Um, Stenwall, we see it through Stenwall's eyes. We only later learn that Scudo was the mm -hmm. one that was like, Leroy, um, 
we later learned that it was that it was Scudo, Scudo. Um, but yeah, I mean, I agree. Like, we, you know, I would have loved Scudo to have some last words, right? Um, yeah. So, Shai, what are your what are your thoughts on the on the on Collegian? Uh, well, the talking about Scudo real quick, um, it broke my heart when Stenwell went to reach to like what is it? Close his eyes. Yes. Like, and he cut himself. Yeah, and I don't know why, but that scene had me crying. I was like, oh, this hurts. Um, and I think, you know, the, the defense of Collegium was, I didn't realize I could love battle scenes in a book like that. Because I always thought I enjoyed, like, battle and war scenes in, like, movies, um, right? Those are, like, those are some of my favorite parts of fantasy movies. But I didn't think, like, I could, I could get behind that in a book because I never... It, it always felt like the action was so divorced from the characters mm -hmm. and I never felt invested, but this changed that. Like it, I, I think in like the, the rousing speeches, those are always things that make me break down into tears and like start shouting. I'm listening to the audiobook, like cleaning my apartment and like screaming. I'm sure my neighbors are hearing me. It's great. You listen uh, to the audio? Mm -hmm. I listen to like, I did a uh, part audio and part like, uh, immersive reading. Gotcha. Um, the is it audio good? Book, the audio good? Oh, it is so good. Oh, I, I can imagine the speeches on audio. Yes. Mm, so, like the the narrator, amazing. I think even it even adds so much characterization um, to the you know to everyone. And highly recommend. They're all on Scribd. Um, if you're interested, if that's a thing y'all do. Um, but yeah, and I also like. Can we go back and talk about Tisamon some more? Because. Yeah. <sighs> His character, the I knew, I knew I was going to love this book at the beginning after um, he confronts Piraeus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is like that and claims Tynisa. Like, I, I shouted in that moment. I was like, yes. Like, that's a good moment. Yep. Yeah. And then he was like, and Piraeus is like, um, oh, what are you going to do? Come after me if I go after her? And he's like, no. I mean, she can take care of you by yourself. That just, it made me so happy. And then getting to see like him trust Tynisa enough to take mm -hmm. her to the, like the rest of the, the mantis, like, yeah. And then watching Tynisa, like not even play around with Piraeus. Like Piraeus mm -hmm. isn't even in the same realm as a yep. fighter as she is. Like suck it Piraeus, you little twerp. I thought, I thought Tissamon and Tynisa had some really good character stuff, uh, again, Angela's going to say that she wanted more, which is, well, which, I mean, I agree. I agree. But I this think this is my favorite character. So of course I'm going to say, I would have liked to have more of it. And then kind of going back to what we were saying, and I see some commentary in the comments um, with the spider showing up at the end collegium. I really would have liked to have seen that scene between Tanissa Tissimon and the spider. I forgot his name, but um, it was like, it. well, it kind of cuts out where she's oh, like, Oh, yeah. I'm after, where, after the introduction, yeah. Yeah, after that, um, after the introduction, and where the um, the rest of the mantises come in and like kill off the wasps near the end. Like mm -hmm. I would have liked to have seen that conversation rather than be told about it later, in Stein Stenwald's perspective. So, yeah, but yeah, I mean, Tinnis is my favorite though. So of course I'm going to say I want more of stuff yeah. with her and Tismon. Well, I, I wanted more with Thalric, and um, so Nano Tyrannus. Like mm -hmm. I agree. Like if if. I there was a, there's a lot of battle and so when 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 mm -hmm. Sam says three stars because he just doesn't care about the sieges I understand this book was I think it was like th 300 full 300 pages yeah. of, oh, yeah. of battle and that's a lot um and when we were talking before when Angela and I were talking before um in that I think if he had split it like had the first book be the Siege of Tark up through mm -hmm. Totho, up through the, the big thing with Totho. And then the second book, or, and the Vecker marching to Collegium. Yeah. And so the second book is uh, Sarn, the Sarnish defense, which is mm -hmm. again, the least interesting section of the whole book. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the Siege of Collegium, all of that being a second book, I think there would have been more time to develop each of the characters within those sections yeah um you know but i mean again i was okay with it and i think totho at least totho got more than what he got last book which we'll yeah, talk yeah. about in a second hold on look, i want to catch up with the comments um 
Uh, I don't know. Can I going back to that oh. comment about the fact that there was so much battle? Um, <laughs> I think this comment to Alan when, because Alan and I finished a little bit before um, Katrina and Ina did. And part of me, like, because there was so much battle and because there was such a big focus on Collegium at the end, I almost forgot about what happened in Tark because there was so much yeah. stuff at the end that I loved. However, there is a part um, with Tark, and it's the most random thing. I don't know why I love this scene so much, but we get introduced to the Mole Cricket kin Kingdom. Yes! In and Tark. I love them. I love them so much. And in Tark, the leader, um, they all know they're going to die. And the leader, before he touches the wall, he says, pardon this violence. And I don't know why I love that scene so much, because it's like nothing really. But I just love the way he phrased it. And because they're afraid, but they're doing this anyways, because they have to. So I just love that part. Because um, that one line of inner monologue yeah. shows so much about the characterization of that kindred. Yes. Like you understand part of who they are from that. <laughs> Really quickly, Klaus, because Angela keeps bringing this up. He doesn't have plot armor. He has actual <laughs> copper weave armor that actually turns aside blades. He put it on in one of the first chapters of Empire in Black and Gold, and it is saving his life. It is well known. Like, Tchaikovsky doesn't, he makes sure that we know this is not armor that every um, wasp general wears. He got it from somewhere, and I don't know where, mm -hmm. but he wears it on purpose because it's so protective. So Plus, that is why I agree with you. I that agree is with why you. He keeps surviving. Why they spared him, that's a different story. Why I I'm a little bit with you in the fact that I don't know how Felice and in her insane rage didn't just go ahead and um kill him. Klaus, yeah, and you have no problem with anybody surviving in Lord of the Rings um with their magic crap. You're just Klaus, you are inconsistent. And I really I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna review your performance. Uh, your performance evaluation as Hand of the King right now. Uh -oh. Because you are being, you are, you are enforcing the King's justice inconsistently right now. Um, but uh, I mean, I, I, I agree that I don't understand why he wasn't killed at the end because yeah. Fel Felice did get through his armor at the end with uh, the, the copper weave. Like she finally did get through it and he was run through by, oh, not Felice, the whoever, the wasps that jumped him. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he did, he was jumped. I don't understand why Felice didn't kill him. I, I don't really get that. So I'm with you. I also don't care because I like Thalric. And now that Thalric is one of the quote unquote good guys, I'm totally okay with it. We knew that Thalric was going to run in, run afoul of the Emperor. We knew that, that he was going to, you know, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody loved how it happened that his challenge was, I want to live. Like, I'm, I don't want to die for the Emperor. Because he's like, how is this good for the Emperor? How is this, how is me dying? good for the empire and it's not it's just yeah. petty. he's not willing to die for petty squabbling among generals and so i do like that that he's like screw that like screw that but i wish it had you know come less kind of out of nowhere so i, I i'm with y'all however there. i i do like how that was paralleled with what happened with che later how um when the train crashed and she was surrounded by the wasps. And at first she stood fighting. She was like, I'm going to die nobly, like Tisman and Tynissa. But then when she looked around and saw the massacre happening, happening around her, she was like, you know what? No, I'd rather live. And in that moment, it like mirrored what happened with Thalric earlier. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was interesting. <laughs> Yeah, you're right, uh, Bridget, but I think we're going to see the slow change of conscience. I think he, um, it is survival instinct, I agree, but I think, I think it's going to be interesting because I think Thalric still, I think he still supports the Empire. I think he's yeah. still an Empire's man, mm -hmm. but I think he thinks that the people in charge yeah. are the wrong people. It's that Emperor versus the Empire yeah. so, kind of situation. So do you think he supports the empire or the emperor? Empire. Empire, yeah. Okay. So emperor. I think so I think I think it's gonna be really interesting. Cause I think Klaus, I think Klaus, Thalric. Sorry. I think <laughs> Thalric, I think Thalric is still an empire man. Mm -hmm. But I think that the he thinks the empire's lost its way. So mm -hmm. this is very, I mean, this is very Caesar of him. I mean, Caesar believed in in, I mean, he believed in, in the Roman Republic as well, but mm -hmm. it was broken because the people in charge kept breaking it. And, you know, so he's like, all right, well, let's flip it over and start again. 
Uh, so I'm hoping that, I, I don't know. I don't, I just don't know. I'm interested to see where Thalworks going to go. I really, really do not want him to turn good. Right. Same. I do not, um, I don't, I don't necessarily know if I like want a betrayal from him, but I don't think he is the type of character to completely switch sides to, um, abandon Ha, abandon his beliefs. Yes. Oh yeah. I think what Bridget's yeah. saying is, yeah. That's a good, yeah. Yeah, he's gonna bet. He's gonna. Oh. So I, I agree with you, Shay. I hope that he doesn't. I hope that he's working with our guys temporarily because they're they're like I always like that trope. The bad guy who's temporarily working with the good guys because their their goals align at the time, but he's not really a good guy. And later he'll be back. Mm -hmm. I hope Thalric ends up at the head of the the new. The new bag. The broken sword. Um, that yeah. I love the broken sword in that plot line, and I wonder if Thal Thalric is going to team up with them. What broken sword? I'm, I've I've missed it. Who's the broken sword? The broken sword is um, the people traveling with Thalma. Is it? And they're the wasps that don't agree with yeah. everything the Empire yes. is doing. Yes. Yeah. But I also wonder too. So, yeah. as a person who did not like Thalric in book one. Having to say that I do think that he was like, I didn't like his character arc in this book. I think that his, he is one of the inconsistencies that Tchaikovsky had as far as characters go for me in this book. I'm now the most invested in his storyline in book three, because he's going with Tissimon and Tanissa to save Che. The three yep. T's, that's going to be a cool plot line. And, and I think that's going to have a lot to do with what he ends up doing, whether he becomes like a good guy or if he um, kind of stays committed <laughs> to the empire. Because he's going to be traveling with Tanissa and Tissimon. He's going to get Che, who he does respect. And there's debate about whether there's something else there or not. So he's going to be spending all these time with these people. And I wonder how that's going to influence his um, commitment to the Empire going forward. Yeah. And uh, Mystic has a good point. Is I'm not sure Thalric's against the Emperor. I think the Emperor is not paying enough attention to his underlings. Yeah. I think it's the Rekaf that has become yeah. the cancer of the emperor. I think Thalric's going to try to purge the Rakef. Well, because the emperor is so obsessed with maintaining uh, yeah. power and staying on the, the throne. Staying alive. Getting staying rid alive, of like, being yeah. immortal. Mm -hmm. He's not paying attention to what's happening below him. Yeah. Which, can we also talk about the mosquito? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm going to say. Yeah. So y'all are, are, are cool still talking because we are almost in an hour and we still have yeah. to talk about the mosquito. We have not mentioned Totho, and I then we'll of, Totho. Course, we'll of course talk about Salma and Grief and Chains yeah. because Angela will be very upset if she's not allowed to, she's yeah. not allowed to, uh, to tout her favorite of the plot lines hmm. in the book. In fact, Angela, before the show, said, I think that Salma and Grief and Chains is the most realistically written fantasy <laughs> romance that I have ever read. I've, she actually, y'all, I, I have screenshots. She actually sent me the first page of her Salma Grief and Change fanfic she's writing. So if y'all want to uh, take no. a look at that. But guys, oh seriously, my God. you better, you better oh make God. sure like you've got the AC on because that is, whoo, it is. It's a little steaming. Oh my God. It's, it's steaming chains. Whoo. I can't even talk right now. <laughs> None of that's true. Oh, yeah. And we have to do predictions. So I apologize. If you anyway, heard so Angela we, we ranting. We segue. We segue to oh the So let's talk. I was so happy. And Dom, <laughs> thank you for not revealing it. Because remember, at the end, Dom, I was like, I want to see those mosquito lords. Mm -hmm. And freaking second emperor chapter. The, and the way he described them from the protuberant eyes that are bulging out, that are and just red. red and oh. like. Freaking Ukberto or whatever, he's so gross. He's so oh my gosh. Like and the stuff so that he crazy. talks about the old lore. And I want to see the kingdom of the slugs. Mm -hmm. I hope we yeah. get to see the kingdom of the slugs and all of those other um uh kindon. I mean, we're not gonna talk much about the spiders who are Persia, like when they came back and it talks about how they have all of these like uh, subservient races and they're just super wealthy. They're Persia. Th did you get that, Shy? Yep. Like they're yep. freaking Persia. And the fire ants who are Greek, like they're they're ants. They're clearly Greek, but they serve the Persian. They're the freaking Ionians, you know? Like it's 
I was just like, oh, okay, this is going to be super cool. Um, but yeah, the mosquitoes are, um, what the crap? Shy, what'd you think of the, the mosquito stuff? I, I want like, I was not expecting this, like this series to when I started go so like um, be so involved with the like the old magic, right? I wasn't expecting that, and I'm so excited that it's going there. Like I, I want an entire book on just exploring that. Um, I'm like, I do obviously. You, what is what is the mosquito's name? I can never. It's remember. like Uberto or something. Yeah, I'll look it up. Uh, Uktebri, right? Uktebri, there you go. Yes. Um, he creeps me out. And I really, like, I really like, is it Seda? Seda. Seda. Yeah. Yeah. I like her a lot. And I am mm -hmm. so scared for her. Like, I don't sure. think she is politically savvy enough. Or at least we haven't seen her be politically savvy enough to kind of navigate um, Uktebri, right? Uh, and I think, I don't know. I'm, I really like that we got that. Uh, that vision into what you know what what the old magic is every like that is that is very cool. I have a feeling that we're going to see a lot of that old magic versus yeah. the artificers coming up in the next book, and I think that's going to be very interesting. Angela, you you are like like shy. Want a bunch of the Age of Lore? Yeah, stuff, I do. Right? That's something I've been waiting for. Um, it's kind of part of the some of the problems I have with this book whenever the magic gets shown. And Alan made a good point about the fact that we are so focused on the artificers and the technology and everything else that that might be why we haven't seen some of the magic. But for me, like especially talking about the butterfly kindon, for example, we don't understand a lot about what they can do. So some of what Grief and Chains or whatever the heck her name is at the end of this book um, what she can do and like it causes questions because if she's so powerful then why is she in the situation she's in so i feel like if we had more background on the magic not just for her but for the box and everything else um some of this would make more sense but i also am more interested in the magic as well yeah the um the stuff about uh those other kindon comes in akios's chapter in chapter 40 mm -hmm. when he's like dreaming about the box um when it's talking about how what because that was cool how the mantises like the mm -hmm dark Kyrian or whatever the forest like it was at the end of the age of lore because we see i really again i love that we had the age of lore the age of magic where all these apt races were enslaved and then they invented and and it's an off it's an off color off the cuff reference the crossbow was one of the things that helped them overthrow their masters because mm -hmm. anyone could use it it was an unskilled weapon yep and so the artificers invented this technology and overthrew the inapt races, the lore races. But now we're seeing we're seeing another, a new age, like the age of it's even beyond the apt. But so it's, you know, it's the end of the age of lore. Um, the, the the apt races have risen up, and it's like when unity was needed most, there was a schism. Centuries of strife had held the moth kingdom together. They had raised armies against the centipede kingdom who had erupted from the earth want to see those they had staved mm -hmm. off or defeated the machinations of all the other sorcerous powers spiders and mosquitoes the sly assassin bugs and the ancient buried kingdom of the slugs oh i want to see all of those things gonna be so freaking cool um i just love how many how many freaking kindon there are too. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah the mosquitoes are creeping yeah. the shadow box is I hate Scylla. I like I I hate I hate Scylla. I hope that she gets killed by someone. Like I don't care. I don't care who gets the box as long as it's not Scylla. You know, if the Emperor's gonna take over the world and gets it, fine. As long as Scylla dies. Dead. Get out. Um I had hoped that the Vec were gonna recognize that she wasn't one of them and, and murder her. That would have been just desserts. But it's um it's gonna be very interesting because that's what book three is about. It's a kios. I read the back, and book three is a kios is going to where the box is. And so uh -huh. um we're definitely gonna get more a kios in the next book. Uh I don't know what else, but because we don't, you know, haven't read the back of it. Uh but the mosquitoes are very, very, very interesting. I I am looking forward to the conflict between Seda and I because I love the um what is he? The freaking her butler, the the guy who's been there, who goes <laughs> when he talks. Oh. What race is he? He's the 
He's some he's kind of, kind of he's, he's wait. Oh, man. It's not a mole cricket. He's a no. It's not a mole cricket. It's anyway. a woodlouse. Woodlouse. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The woodlouse who's like, oh no, magic definitely exists, and also you should definitely not trust Uberti. Yeah. Uh, do do not Otebri. Do not trust yeah. Otebri unless you have to. So I can't wait to see the the, the conflict between Seda and um and uh, and and the emperor uh Alvin Alvin I think is the name mm -hmm. Alvin yeah um because I think I think the female characters in this in these the series are really good like I yeah. think they're really good um well, okay oh my gosh we have so much to talk about Felice Felice real quick yeah, I love like, Felice her introductory chapter like I'm sad she didn't do a whole lot but the first chapter she was introduced I was like holy crap Mm -hmm. And, you know, I predicted that her deal mm -hmm. was that tall Rick, um, very close, Nano. We talked about this at the very beginning. Very close. Um, I predicted that it was because tall Rick, that's the, the, the dragonfly children that he killed that he talks yeah. about in the first book. And it was, but I'm glad there was more to it. Yeah. In that she was so shell-shocked by it mm -hmm. that they tried to heal her broken mind. And it worked part way, but only part way. And she went insane and then killed all of her family and all the doctors that tried to help her, except for that spider doctor who's kind yeah. of following her. I thought that was really cool backstory mm -hmm. for her. And the fact that she's now on their side, you know, as one of the, what are they called? The, the ma Mazers, the Macers, the... Yeah. The, the, the Mercers. 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 Now that she's one of the Mercers again, like, I cannot wait to see what Felice does. I love her relationship with Tissimon. Like, I think I would be very happy if they fight. ended up like if they were love interests. I would. Angel's gonna fight you. Uh oh. <laughs> I said I said that same thing. I I would. <laughs> say that Angela is not. Go ahead, Angela. You're. I knew you're, better you're than to say that. Okay. So I like the fact that they have a relationship, like a friendship, and they both are grieving something. And I like that they have a bond. And I would like to see that friendship stay a friendship, especially because, like Tismon says in the book, that Atressa was it. Like when Mantis um, commit, they're done. Like one and done. So for him, like nobody's ever going to uh, replace Atressa. So I don't want to see, and, and the other thing is, I don't love the way that Tchaikovsky does romantic relationships, period, in this series. So I also feel like if he does try to do this thing with Tissimon and Felice, it's not going to be done very well. So I'd rather it stay a friendship and then have a close bond because they have a shared experience with grief. Okay, and and loss. to be fair, every relationship in this book is a teenage relationship, mm -hmm. except for the gross one between the teacher and the student, which is also gross. He does, there's not a single normal relationship in this book. So you haven't actually seen him write a normal one. We've just seen teenage angst. And I, I'm with you. The only way I'd be okay with it is if it was drawn out over, like if if they're both still alive in like book eight and then developed a relationship, I might be okay with that because it's like, it's eight, like that's yeah. a long time to develop it. But next book, I'd probably, I'm probably with you, Angela. If it happened next book, I'd be like, mm. But I don't think Tissamon survives the first four. So I don't think he does just, either. I'm just going to be so upset. Yeah. Like, Shay, I... Shai, you need to prepare yourself. I, yeah. You know that Tissamon is one of the most expendable characters in this book right now. No, and I know, like, obviously he's a mentor figure, mm -hmm. and that means, like, the likelihood of him dying already in yeah. days, right? But it's going to hurt so much. Like, I just, if anyone can survive, I want it to be Tissamon. Like... It's gonna it's hurt. Not, so. It's it's <laughs> not. You know that it's not going to be right. It's, it, no, he's, let he's, me. Now that now that he has trained up Tynissa to replace him, he literally no longer has his armor. Let it her live gone. in denial, Alan. Let her be happy Thank with Tissamon being Thank alive right now. It is gone. Um, but because uh, our boy Pete will be very upset. Uh, Pete, one of Pete's big things is he wanted more on the Mantis Islands, more with, yeah. with Tissimon and Tynissa on the Mantis Islands. Uh, Katrina, how do you feel about the, the Mantis stuff with like the training and the, you know, the, the I hate, I'm just gonna say, I don't like the take the drug to make the test, to take the I was trial that part. Yeah. I, Like that is in, why is that in so many books? 
Is that like something that real people do? Is that like based on real? Are there real societies where you take a drug and go through a trial? Because this is in so much many fantasy books or video games, and I don't like it anytime I see it. Yeah, I wasn't fond of that part either. The part that I really liked during the um, time we were with the other mantises was when Tisman was talking to one of the leaders about the war. I liked all of the conversations about the war between the characters. Um, but I will say I'm not as, I like Tisman and Tynessa, but they are not my favorite. I think I am more drawn to the apt Kinden than the inapt. Same. So like Drefos and Totho, they were, their scenes were my favorite. Oh, we're, that's going to be the last thing yeah. we talk about because it's, uh, I think it's one of the best arcs done. Like it's absolutely. Yeah, I agree with that. Same. Um, but Nero, you're absolutely right. The wasps caused the one thing mm -hmm. they didn't want, they didn't want, which was to unite the lowlands, um, which is, oh gosh, this book is so, this series is so flipping good. Like I can't even, and there's still crap to talk about. So Angela, you can go ahead and get a start, um, started. Uh, <laughs> oh, we're going to talk about Selma now. I think the one, I think the one storyline that was lacking more than any others is I think I do not like the Selma plot line, and I know mm -hmm. you don't, and I don't think anybody here does. So, no. Angela, go ahead. You now have the floor until you're done talking about Selma. <laughs> so, okay, if we go back to Empire, I think we can all agree that Toto and Selma kind of had the least amount of page time because of where we left them. So it made sense that in this book, I think starting chapter two, we kind of pick up with them. And there's a big focus on both of these characters throughout. And I would say there's almost an equal focus. But I do not think Tchaikovsky developed both Toto and Selma in the same way. Toto's arc is incredible. It's so well executed. Where he ends up at the end of this book, and I know we're going to talk about it in a bit, was great. Selma, on the other hand, he's pretty much useless. Um, first of all, his foundation set in the in Empire is he's under a love spell by grief and chains. Then in Dragonfly Falling, the spell comes off and he's like, oh, I love you. Where's the foundation and motive for that? There was, there was nothing. The fact that she put a spell on him is the yeah. foundation. And they had like two conversations while they were I don't prisoners. even think they had two conversations while they were. <laughs> I was captured. being generous. Like, <laughs> but there's also a lack of consent too, because he was under a spell this entire time. So it's so questionable. And so now they're like together and happy and doing whatever. Like, I just, I have a whole issue with that. And I don't like the way that it's driven his character. And using that as a motive is a problem for me because it wasn't executed or in the foundation was really weak, in my opinion. And that carried over into Dragonflight Falling in a huge way. I don't even like that he's doing this Robin Hood thing because it just feels so hollow, especially in comparison to what we're getting with Totho. And like what he's doing. And I know it's not the same and we shouldn't treat them the same. But as far as the character development, this is what I was talking about earlier where I said Tchaikovsky is really inconsistent with how he does his character arcs and the development that we get. Because I feel like Selma should have had way more development. And I do not like the arc. I don't feel like it's very strong. Like I just don't like anything about it, to be honest. Yeah. I am. Um, so uh, I agree with you on much of it. And then some of it, like most people are okay with where it's headed. You are not, which is... I get it. Uh, your hatred is too is too great. Um, <laughs> yeah, you are a Sith. Um, but um, I, like, so I like that Salma. Once he solved his stupid grief and chains crap, or, like, what's she now? What's she, prize prize of dragon? Dragons. Or, yeah. Um, that he finally is like, I'm a freaking dragonfly prince. I need to do my freaking job. Like, so I like that he finally snapped out of it. I don't like that he was under a love spell until he died. And then she essentially resurrects him. Part of my problem is the fact that we don't know enough about the butterfly kingdom. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. only thing we know about them, my favorite thing we know about them is from Empire, when Akios talks about how the moths despise yeah. the butterfly kingdom because of how useless they are. Mm -hmm. Without knowing enough about the butterfly kingdom, we don't understand why they can essentially resurrect people, yeah. how their charm ability works. Because if her charm is that powerful, how did she ever get captured to start with? Why not just dance for them and get them to let you go? We don't know enough. And that is what's bothering me more than anything. If they could just explain to me where their power comes from, and if mm -hmm. it's just like, 
are they just this really rare, extremely powerful race that like, just explain, just explain a little bit about it. And then mm-hmm. I might feel better about this whole, this whole uh, butterfly arc. But until then, it's just like, she would, she he had a spell on him until he died. Then she took it off and he's like, well, I still feel this way. So I must love you. Well, no, no, that's kind of Stockholm syndrome. Like, it's it's leftover, you know, it, it's kind of gross. And also, how does Grief and Chains get away from the wasp? That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Isn't he the least bit suspicious that she got away from the Sorry, wasp? Do you, have a, do you have a prediction? Oh. Oh, you think she's a traitor? I, I do. do. Please, guys, if she's a bad guy, I will say Tchaikovsky. I hope she's a bad guy. Please let her be a bad guy. Please. I have that written down as one of my predictions. Fantastic. Please. Because how did she get away? The thing There's is, so Angela, many questions. <laughs> Angela, you're just sitting there like, you know that it's because she danced and because she used her power. It has nothing to do with her being a bad guy. It's going to get left on the table. It's going to be something yeah. stupid and lame. That's how Angela, I feel about it, yeah. I'm with you. But I hope <laughs> that Shy and Katrina are right. It is my fondest hope. I hope they're right too, but I just, I don't feel like we're going to get it. I feel like it's going to be left on the table. It's going to be terrible. I'm still going to hate it when we get to book four, when this arc is done. Like, I I'm think, I think she betrayed them. I think that's how she got away from the wasps. They let her go to go find Selma. Um, I think that she's going to betray him and Selma is going to be the one that has to kill her. Uh, I would please, be happy with that. Please. I would be happy with that. Please. You know what? They can kill each other. Yeah, it's even better. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> I want police to see to see Salma and be like, "What? You be- you betrayed us, Dad. Get him, police. I don't need yeah. I don't need you anymore, Salma. I've got a different dragonfly, and she's way cooler." See ya. I, I don't know. I feel like Tchaikovsky. Like it might be because I have too much faith in him as an author, right? I think, like, it's hard for me to believe that he would write Selma like that without there being a reason. You know, I don't, I think it, the the fact that he was immediately like, oh, it must mean that I love you. Like that the, that was so insta lovey. And I am going to be so incredibly upset if she is not a, a traitor of some kind or still does not have some spell over him. Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I think I, I have enough faith in Tchaikovsky to fix this. If if Tchaikovsky has this payoff that he sets up in book one, I am going to lose my mind. That would be incredible. And maybe that's why Akios hates, maybe that's why the moths hate the butterfly because they're tr- they're treacherous, like, maybe. you know, uh, Tchaikovsky, Mr. Tchaikovsky, please, please. I need you to go collect all the copies. If you didn't do this, please go collect all your books and just stick a piece of loose leaf paper in them. Just that fix gives it. us what we want. Mm-hmm. Oh, I hadn't even considered that before you two said it. So bless you for giving me hope. Cause I was like, eh, I'm writing Selma and freaking Goofin chains off. Get out of here. Don't care. Um, so it, I mean, the thing is they're, they're talking in the comments about how it's uh, realistic. And then they're like, you mean toxic? And it's like, well, both of those are realistic toxic relationships. Teenage boys are in toxic relationships all the time. I teach high school. I see it all the time. I think some of them were saying that Toto's um, feelings about Che are realistic, not necessarily Selma's um, feelings mm. about grief and chains, yeah. which I do agree with. I, I do yeah. think that Toto's feelings about Che and even Tanissa's feelings about Selma are realistic. Um, so that is where we're going to go now. Our last thing to discuss. Toto. The Totho Drefos arc. Oh. It is, I thought this is, first of all, good guys, good guys to bad guys is one of my most favorite tropes mm-hmm. in, in all of literature. When the good guy becomes the villain, it is one of my favorite things ever. Mm-hmm. And Totho's, Totho's heel turn here is so believable yeah. and so well done. So emotional. Oh, like he is, first of all, he wants to go out and raid the air, do the airship raid because he, he doesn't care if he lives or dies. And, you know, he's a teenager. He's extreme. He, I mean, he does have, his feelings about Che are unhealthy. That's 100% true. But he left so that he didn't have to deal with those. Like, so it is good that he's not, you know, staying around Che. He's at least distancing himself from the problem. But he doesn't feel, and that's one of the themes of this book. 
There are so many characters looking for where they belong, looking mm-hmm. for acceptance. We've got Ariana. We've got Stenwald, who doesn't know where he fits in in this new world. Um, when the master goes to Stenwald and is like, you got your war, bud. Like, we're going we're gonna to fight the wasps. And Stenwald's like, yes. And he's like, you should not be excited, Stenwald. You should be mourning this. Like, we are never going to have, we're never going to go back to the world we had. You should be mourning the loss of what we have. Um, so, you know, they're trying to find their place in this new world. Thalric's trying to find out where he belongs. Tynissa, you know, yeah. straddling the two worlds. Like, he does this brilliantly. Mm-hmm. And then Totho belongs nowhere. Yeah, He's been at, so. In Collegium, they treat half-breeds better than most places, but even his, even uh, Stenwald, who he considers yeah. his, his uncle, goes, when he asks about mm-hmm. Che, and he can't help the Tarkians, like during the siege, he can't help, he can't do anything. He feels, no one cares about the weapons he invents. Mm-hmm. He feels so useless and so pointless that he's like, you know what, at least I can do this. And if I die, you know what, who cares? No one's gonna care. And then Drephos mm-hmm. appears, who offers him mm-hmm. acceptance yep. and purpose. And from the second, Angela and Katrina will tell you in the Voxer, in the beginning of chapter 20, when Totho wakes up and saying, hey, Drefos wants to talk to you. I literally sent them a message that said, oh no, oh no. Because I knew, I knew where we were going. I'm like, this piece of trash is gonna help, is gonna make Totho make weapons. Ugh. And it was just, Oh, I agree, Nero. Totho is is a flawed character. He's not right. He is a he is a he's yeah. a scared little boy. Yep. Um, I think they're I think they're like eighteen. I think they're like yeah, 18, they're... nineteen. Salma's the oldest, who so I think he's like twenty twenty one. Mm-hmm. Him and Tanissa, Che, and Totho, I think are like eighteen now or so. Yeah. Um, but oh yeah, we're well, we're gonna get to that. <laughs> oh yeah. And just <laughs> him. Um, I'm just looking at all this stuff, but the fact that he, uh, yeah, I agree. I don't, I think he wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. I think he is using Salma as an excuse deep down. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the scene where Drefos makes him fire the gun because they're guns. I mean, let's be honest, the the, the air, it's a gun. Mm -hmm. When he shoots that woman with the armor, with his gun, I mean, that's it. And he knows that he can never be the person he used to be. He has caused, you know, like he's killed thousands with his mm-hmm. with his thing. And then Drefos being like, hey man, like it's oh. our job to make the machines. We don't decide who uses it and where. And then the fact that Drefos was thrilled to death that he gave it, that he gave Che the plans, he's like, that's going to make us have to, that's going to make us have to like retune and find something even better. Drefos is insane. It's so He's a mad scientist. Uh, I can't, mm-hmm. Shai, your thoughts about, your thoughts mm-hmm. about the, the Totho Drefos plot line. I love it. So like, I really did not like Totho in the first book. I thought he was whiny. And yes, while that made him like an accurate teenage boy, <laughs> right? Um, love that um while that made him an accurate teenage boy there's a reason i don't like teenage boys right um so i did not like him in empire however his his corruption arc that is making he corruption. might end up being one of my new favorite characters um i love how he is still like teetering on the brink where he has to in order to like morally justify it to himself he has to use other people as a reason for him to be okay with making these weapons and continuing to work with the wasps right and i i love that we are seeing that that darker side of him Um, and i love drefos i think he is such a cool character i love i love villains or like antagonists i think they are some of my favorite um, especially when we get like from their point of view, I think it is amazing. And just I, when Drefos was talking about how he's so glad that um, Totho gave the the plans to Che, that just like I think he's such a well written character, and I'm so excited to see where the two of them go in the future. I want Totho to turn dark. Like 
I I would be so down if Drekos ended up dying or let eventually and right? and became more- Colonel Auxiliary. Yes. Like that is what I want to happen. I could see that happening. Insane. First of all, yes, reading Rainbow. Um, because we're definitely going to the spider lands. The fact that the spider weave is bulletproof, that's gonna be interesting. Um, but yeah, the, it's just like Drefos, the fact that he is thrilled. I can get in chills because it was so good. Because it's going to force them, it's gonna force them to innovate. And that's all Drefos cares about. He cares about the work. He cares about like if the if he thought the collegium side would value his work more, he'd probably switch sides in a heartbeat and go work for the collegiates. But he knows the collegiates are probably less willing to use mm-hmm. the you know the the mass murder machines. Mm-hmm. That's one of my. I was telling Angela, cause Angela, <laughs> Angela, uh, you're going to get to talk about Drefos in a second. But I was I was talking about how that kind of villain is one of my favorites. The mad scientist that wants chaos that isn't really on a side. He just wants chaos, and this just lends so much to the to these themes of he, he talks to others like look like war we love war war is what makes us innovate that's why and and there's there's the one scene where he's like do you think like what are you what are you crying about do you think if we didn't have this like if we didn't have our 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 airships and our our guns and crossbows they'd pick up rocks and be hitting each other with sticks i like, tabbed that it's, oh, it's so good. i i wrote it like because you know i'm a i'm a poli sci major that's hobbesian it's 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 freaking thomas hobbs that humankind is nas- nasty brutish and short and they are always the natural state of man is to be at war and they're going to kill each other no matter what we do we're just making it easier and the fact that they keep trying to kill each other lets us do what we're good at oh my gosh tchaikovsky what have you done like it's so it's so good angela your thoughts so with Thalric and Empire, because Thalric was the main antagonist. For me, I have a hard time with singularly focused um, characters. So my attachment to Thalric, even as the antagonist, wasn't as strong. So going into Dragonfly Falling, because we're with Thalric first, I was kind of like, all right, whatever. Then Drafos came on the page, and I was like, okay, Tchaikovsky, you got me. Because like Alan, this kind of antagonist is one of my favorites, the character who doesn't care about good or evil. He wants He or she wants to advance something. I love that. I love that whole idea. And I love what he does. And the way um, Tchaikovsky shows this in that scene that we were talking about earlier, where Totho has to use the weapon and he has to kill the woman. Totho's reaction versus Drafos's reaction paired with the chapter we get right afterwards, where we go back to Collegium and Master Graydon kills himself. The three, the way that those three characters deal with the consequences of their own inventions, I mm-hmm. thought was so well done. And the parallel there, the compare and contrast between the three of them, it's so well done. And I agree with, um, I want Totho to go dark. I want him to just lean into that. And I cannot wait for the reunion scene because you know, <laughs> Totho's going to come face to face with Che, Selma, and Tanissa at some point, either in book three or four. And they're going to have to reconcile the Totho they knew with who he is now and what he's done. The fact that Stenwald doesn't know yet. Yeah, that's true. I cannot wait to see the scene where Stenwald finds out. It oh. is going to break my heart because, oh my gosh, I, I am so, I just, I don't want Sten to know what I want. I don't want Sten to know. I, Stenwald, I need you to die before you ever find out because it will make me <laughs> He's going to be heartbroken. And you know he's going to blame himself because Stenwald is just a, a ball of guilt. Um, it's just, oh my gosh, it's going to be so good. Uh, mm-hmm. Katrina, I know this was your favorite arc as well, right? It is. And Totho is actually my favorite character after this book. Um, I I love the conversations that Drefos has with Totho after he's captured. Um, regarding the relationship between technology and war and how you can't have one without the other and you want war to advance technology. But I also like how he always talks about how the warriors are just meat to test your inventions on. Mm-hmm. That is so chilling to me. Oh, yeah, the and whole so meat conversation. That is, and then at the end, how Totho starts using that phrase as well. Yeah. Um, that paired with the emotional scenes between him and Che, right before he frees her, just hit me so hard because I thought those were written so well and so believable, those emotions and the rage that Totho is feeling. Yeah, he screams at her. Yeah. And I think 
um, not only was he in love with Che, right? But I think that Drefos is now representing something that he wanted from Stenwold because yeah. Totho isn't dumb. He saw the reaction that Stenwold had when he told him he wanted to be with Che. And he mentions in this book that the the invention that Drefos thinks is so amazing and put all of his time and energy in, Stenwold said, oh, well, that's just a toy and kind of shoved it aside. So I think Totho is now comparing Stenwold and Drefos. I've got the, I've got the line right here because, and it's, it's so good. Tchaikovsky knows exactly what he's doing because I, 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 I noted this. It's a very throwaway line when he's with Salma. And yeah. he's like, hey, Salma, you remember how I always wanted to wake, make weapons? And Salma's like, not really, but... And that hit me so hard because that's mm -hmm. another thing. That's that's Toto's thing. Like, no one listens to him. No yeah, one cares. Right. Like, he, that's always been his desire. And I know this is on purpose because he says it again to Che right here at the end, where he's like, "Do you want to? Do you want to know what happened? Do you want to know?" He asked her, voice shaking slightly, "What happened here?" I don't understand, Totho. I happened here, Che. That's the simplest thing. Those dead ants out there, I killed them. When the city of Sarn falls, it is I who will break it. When this army or another like it's at the gate of Collegium, it will be me. Do you understand? When the lowlands become just a western wing of the empire, then by rights, my name should yeah. be on the maps. Oh, that gives me chills. Yeah, he's like, all my people, Che. <laughs> what your uncle dismissed it, what your uncle... Mm -hmm. Like let's let's note the rem the the distance he's putting between him and Stenwald. Yeah. What your uncle dismissed as a toy back in Collegium, they have made into a weapon here. You remember you remember how I always wanted to make weapons? Mm -hmm. Well, now it's happened, and my weapons win wars. Oh my gosh, Tchaikovsky's brilliant. Uh, <laughs> like, ah, yeah. uh, it's just it's just so good. It's so good, and I cannot wait to see where it goes. You know, uh, yeah. after you read that again, I think Shy is right. I think Drefos is going to die, and Totho is going to be the ultimate villain in this series. It's going to be. It's we got be. plenty of book time for it to because, happen. Too. Yeah, because oh. Drefos is passionate about inventions and weapons, but Totho has the rage. Drefos isn't. Drefos is angry. Yeah. No. Drefos is just I wonder if Totho will stay angry, though, because I think in part one of the reasons why he's so angry in that scene is because he's talking to Che, because it's not just that he's in love with her. She represents the last link he has, mm. the last like bit of guilt he has for what he's done. And it's almost like he's using her as a vessel for all it, for everything. And the minute she leaves, like that's it. He, he doesn't have to feel guilty in that same way anymore. So I wonder if he still will be angry going forward or if he'll be more like Drefos where he'll just be more focused rather than emotional about it. Mm. I feel like part of it is going to linger though. If there was a scene, an emotional scene between Toto and Stenwald that he like let out his rage and then, you know, mm -hmm. they end with like embracing like, and he's just like bawling. I would not be able to get off the floor because I would be crying so much. <laughs> like, I would not be able to get off the floor because I don't know who can save Totho at this point. Um, and so it depends. It depends on if Tchaikovsky is going, is going for a full villain arc or if he's gonna be able to be redeemed. And if he is, who is gonna be the one, the redeemer? Because I don't want it to be Che. I no. don't want it to be Che. I don't think, I think she can at this point. Yeah, um, so we've got to see who it's going to be maybe salma because him and salma are kind of you know are kind of buddies maybe repaying a, a repaying the the freeing of him but i wanted to, I, I would i would love for it to be stenwald um but we'll see so guys um first of all the fact that it's an hour and a half and there's all we talk about all this stuff like there's so much to talk about in this book i uh, shy you're gonna say something go ahead oh this is like leaning into predictions so that's where we want to go after this. Oh yeah, that's where we're going. We're going to predictions now. Yep. This okay. is the last thing we're talking about are predictions. So my prediction is going to be, um, there's, we're headed towards, so Blood of the Mantis, um, I'm predicting Tissamon's going to bite it because it's called Blood of the Mantis and Tissamon's on the cover. Um, now, no one on the cover has, has died yet. Thalric's on my cover of my first one. And then Felice is on the cover of my second one, but it's called Blood of the Mantis. So I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be, um, uh, Tynissa heavy, except for the fact that the box is a bunch of mantises. Like the box is like the souls of the Dracarion Manti. Manti? Mant mantis? Mant mantids? Mantids. Mantids. Um, but it has a key looking for the box. I think that we're headed towards an apt versus lore battle. Mm -hmm. 
but we only have two books left in this arc. Um, I think we know that it's it's an arc. The arc ends at book four. So I'm trying to figure out, do you think, what do you, let me ask you guys, and then you can make your own predictions. What arc do you think is going to end? Do you think it's going to be the, the shadow box arc or the wasp army arc? Because I think it can only be one. I think one of them is going to end and one of them is going to persist. I think. I don't think he can end both of them in in um, 800 pages. It so what depends if, on how they it ends, I guess. You can't equivocate. You need to pick one. Well, am I even allowed to make predictions? Oh, no. <laughs> Well, no, Angela's cut you, off. You can, you can make predictions. You can make predictions from here. Thank you. You can make predictions within a book because you're usually right. And then I, I, I miss, I, I'm not as clever at figuring stuff out. And so when I have your stuff in my mind, I end up guessing it and I'm like, ugh, ugh. so, um, Katrina, what do you think? I think it's going to be the, I think it's going to be the army. Oh, you think it's going to be the wasps. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Shai, what do you think? Yeah, I think I think it needs to be the wasp. Well, I want it to be the wasp because you want the agent but, back. Yeah, I mean that, and I I want them to have to band together with the wasps in order to take on the whatever is going to be released. With you the, think we're headed for an apt versus inapt war, like an I, age of lore versus the age of the apt? Yeah, mm -hmm. like that is what I want. That um, cool as heck, that like was, tech versus magic. Mm -hmm. So, and that's kind of where I was going with this, where I said it kind of depends because dealing with the box means dealing no, with the knitting. Emperor. That's unacceptable. Sorry. No. No, oh, that's okay. hilarious. No. <laughs> um, because it kind of depends on what happens with the box, right? So, if we end up like <laughs> kind of resolving the conflict with the emperor, and let's say Seda doesn't, so let's say the emperor dies and then Seda becomes in control of it that will change what happens with the wasp and the direction that they go in. So that's why I said it could be both technically, because it kind of mm -hmm. depends on what happens with this box. Um, I do think the box is going to be the main um, feature. And I think we are going to get more of the magic. I agree with Alan. I don't think Tissamon is going to make it through the end of the four book arc. I also have a feeling um, because the other thing that I've noticed too, because we're two books in and we have two books left, our main four, not counting Stenwald, but the four kids, they're all still alive and well. I mean, Toto is, well, I don't know if he's as well as he can be at this point, but they're all alive right now. I have a hard time thinking all four of them are going to make it out of this four book arc alive as well. Mm -hmm. Alan, you're, you're on Thanks. So if you have to predict the death of one of our main four, um, who do you think will bite it? If, if Selma. you have to pick one. Selma. Selma? Selma. Selma. <laughs> yeah. Selma. Um, I don't think it's Tynissa. I, I don't, don't think it's Shay because Shay hadn't done anything yet. Selma's yeah. the most expendable. I think point. it could be I, Toto. I think, no. I think it could be Toto. Toto's development. No. He still has a lot to go. So I, I know, but if he's maybe, on the bad guy side, I think it could be Toto. Maybe what, the butterfly will kill Selma. I hope so. What do you think, Shai? I... I want, I want Selma, to, of those four, I want Selma to be the one who dies. I don't think Tizamon is going to make it, but what I really want is for Stenwald to be killed by one of Toto's. Oh, okay. Why do you oh, want no. to do this? I, I <laughs> want that to be the like the, the, the last point. thing for Toto, right? I want him to see, I want to see a full corruption arc. And in the end, like I think, I think that is what is going to shut him down from like the the complete destruction of of this world right it, it, what it does <gasps> it proves it proves it's going to prove to his ego that's that little voice that he's better than stenwald your master maker not mm -hmm. anymore ah uh, try if that happens no that is unacceptable. <laughs> unacceptable i i reject that i reject that prediction and substitute my own reality um, i like that prediction because you guys all think that toto had has a chance of being redeemed i don't I do. i'm not so convinced i think he's going to stay on the darker path i think if he stays on the darker path he dies mm -hmm. i think he's gonna bite it i could see him kill it like killing himself and like to uh in the destruction of all of his weapons right doing yeah. something that like destroys all of his plans and his weapons and dying with them like yeah. he knows because he still has that knowledge inside of him it still has the possibility of 
like yeah. continuing with these weapons of like these destructive yeah. weapons, right? You guys are making me so sad right now. I'm gonna need, look, I'm gonna need my boy Thalric to straighten up and fly right. Like he is so interesting and then became not interesting in the second half of that book. I cannot wait to see Felice kick the crap out of somebody. Like yeah. Yeah. I cannot wait to see Felice and Tissamon fighting side by side. Mm -hmm. Like just just wrecking crap. Just and I'm also excited to see the spiders and more about I'm the spider stuff and Persia and they're like mm -hmm. we're gonna see more about the noble houses almost guaranteed. Again, if you look at the map in, in uh Blood of the Mantis, it's east. Mm -hmm. So on the very western part of the map, mm -hmm. we see one of those fly cities that the spiders were like, wait a minute, I thought you said you weren't gonna advance on spider territory. Mm -hmm. And the general's like, it's not? Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, no, no, that's definitely ours. It's been ours for hundreds of years. Yeah. I like that spider guy. He's like, I'm useless. That's why they sent me. They don't send important too. people. Yeah. Like, I, they, they remind me a lot of the Dro uh, yeah. from D&D, a very matriarchal society where the men are kind of the warriors and uh, like are, are kind of useless. The men are the ones that go and they're the ambassadors and stuff like that, while the women are the heads of the noble houses or the priestesses mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, so that's going to be super interesting. Mm -hmm. And I loved the fire ants at the end. Oh, so they were crazy. They were really cool. Yeah. Um, I also, like one other prediction, I, or I'm not prediction, just a thing I'm excited for. I am so ready to see Tynisa meet the the butterfly. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's going to be hard. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> That's a good point. They're going to have to, and then they're, she's going to have to deal with that too, because mm -hmm. Tanissa has feelings for Selma and now mm -hmm. Selma's in love with grief and chains. So I you're right. Her. They're going to have to deal with that. I want her I to like slap Selma out of it. Right. I oh, want, I want her to mm -hmm. I do not think Felice is going to forgive Thalric. I do not think no. it can be no. because of, I mean, he, he made her watch him murder her husband and and I, oh and i forgot i love the fact that she grabbed her husband's sword yeah. and that's what she's been killing everybody with mm -hmm. um is she was not she was i mean you know she's she's awesome mm -hmm. so yeah yeah the bee kenden yes yes the way the empire keeps people in line through mm -hmm. hostages is really really interesting yeah um so i like i like that i mean i like that we learned a little bit about the bees and stuff like that mm -hmm. so so guys, thank you so much for joining me for this incredibly long discussion about <laughs> about uh, about freaking Dragonfly Falling. Oh, why do you think it's called Dragonfly Falling? I forgot to ask. I have that. a prediction about Go that. Go ahead. Why is it called Dragonfly Falling? All right. So at first I thought it had to do with co the common wheel, but we did not get that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's because the dragonfly fell in love. That's in, that's unacceptable. I, I hate that. it, but that's the only that's thing I can that's think. That's a terrible of. answer. I reject that. Sorry, <laughs> Katrina. I'm gonna pretend you didn't say that. I, I am. I am. Angela, I said that to you already. I'm I know, it. and I was keep you, trying to forget it. I know. Angela, what do you think? I honestly have no idea. Um, there's no other like, answer. There's no other. Like we don't focus on the dragonflies. It, Selma is not done very well in this book. Like he's not well executed his character arc. So I really don't know why. Um, unless he just picked it because, I don't know, each book is focused on a different kin kinden. So I don't know if that had anything to do with it. See, I personally, I think it adds to the theory that like, you know, I, I think we're supposed <laughs> to think it is Sama falling in love, right? Um, but I, I think this is these like, I think it is Tchaikovsky setting up Selma's downfall with Grief and Chain. Oh, like, I think this oh, is I like the beginning that. of the end for him. Man, I think, I don't know. I thought it had something to do with Felice because she was on the cover. Mm -hmm. So maybe. I don't know. But we'll see. We will definitely see. Um, so, guys, thank you so much. Everyone who's, who sat with us this long, thank you guys so much for reading along with us. Um, the next one is shorter, about 250 pages shorter. Mm -hmm. um, and so is, the, so is uh, Salute the Dark. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be. Thank you guys so much for continuing to read along with us. Um, the roaches, the musicals. Uh, Angela, didn't you look that up? Like, because I was like, how are the yeah, roaches like? The roaches are like the bards, but apparently mm -hmm. the roaches roaches sing or something. Yeah, like they that. make noise. Like they make noise, whistling and oh, stuff. Weird. So That's it's a thing. Exactly. That's absolutely vile. Um, but yeah, so um, everyone who uh, joined, thank you so much. Thank you for being in the comments. It's not the same without you guys' comments. We will continue starting in October with um, Blood of the Mantis and have a live show at the end of that as well 
and you know then we'll continue to salute the dark and it's looking more and more like we, we will just probably keep going um but uh if you are not uh if you're not following these three these three wonderful people on instagram you definitely should be um and yeah tune in next month for uh blood of the mantis have a great rest of your saturday everybody Bye. and you guys Bye. don't close it i'm just going to end the broadcast Bye.